Good morning from the French Alps and today I'm on the Col de la Ramaz with three weeks to go until the Etape de Tour. So I'm a couple of k's into the climb as you can see it's super humid this morning it's really warm it's about 22 degrees already 20 past nine in the morning which I guess is about the time that the fast riders will be hitting the bottom of the Ramaz so as I'm winding up through the lower slopes of the Ramaz I thought today we'd have a look to see if there's anything new on the climb even though it's local to me it's the first time I've been over it this year also I'm going to talk about three things one is the current water situation in the Alps and whether the public water fountains will be switched on which on cue that one is switched on number two I'm going to have a look at hairpin bends or as the Americans call them switchbacks and what technique works for me and thirdly a topic that nobody really wants to talk about what happens on the day of the attack if you're one of the people that knows you're not going to get to the finish I'm going to try and talk and ride but I'm not sure that's going to work today we'll see how it goes so firstly the water situation we seem to be in the middle of a drought it's been absolutely scorching the last few weeks and the first section of the event is in the Haute Chablais and their region has issued a kind of a law that says that all public water fountains that are free flowing should be switched off I will update on our community page if I hear of any other news about what's happening on that suffice to say at the moment don't rely on public water fountains that you may have seen in my previous videos if you do want to have a look at the running to the Col de la Ramaz you can click the video up to the right here so turn into hairpin bends as we call them in Britain or switchbacks as the Americans seem to call them this is what works for me most hairpin bends have a little bit of structure to them and on a climb for example like Alp Duez the bend itself is as flat as a pancake so if you follow the physics through on that so if I'm approaching a flat bend like this one if I go around the far outside of it then that's the least energy and you may find that you're even able to change up a gear nine kilometers to go and we've got some new tarmac now on a climb like the Ramaz the bends aren't as wide but my preferred technique is to start on the outside of the bend here and then cut across the apex and if the road is closed you can continue to cut across and you will feel that you get a kick into the corner and out again technique is the technique if you're feeling really fit and you want to attack your mates so come up in the left hand gutter and you're going to go up the steepest part of the bend and keep in tight and sprint out of it so for me it's option two most of the time but at the end of the etape de tour probably option three so whilst I'm out today I am filming the descent of the Ramaz so I'll aim to get that one uploaded later in the week so on to the topic that nobody wants to talk about what happens if you know that you're not going to finish the event now the attrition rate in the Etape de Tour is quite high I think last year there was over a thousand that didn't finish the event and what's the easiest way to get to Morzine if you do have to pack it in so on that note I see that the organisation have organised some repatriation points 
this year. I can't exactly remember where they are, but just be mindful if it's anything like the Marmot, you'll be on a coach and your bike will be thrown in a truck. So how can you ride back to Mozine without too much pain? There's only two points you can do this. Once you've descended the Col de Fer to Lulan, there's a shortcut back to Mozine without too much climbing. You tell from my voice this morning it's been a stop start year for me and I'm unsure as to whether I'm going to finish. So I'm going to park a car in Tanange. Then if I'm really not feeling it, I can DNF at the bottom of the Ramaz. Now that won't work for everybody. And I think the best option for those of you that definitely don't think you're going to make it over the Zhu plan is to take this turn in on the Col de la Ramaz descent. If you turn left here, it's basically after the avalanche shelter on your way down, sharp left, down over the bridge, which I think is the Pont de Gé. If you turn left off the course here, it's a short climb up to Gé, and then it's all downhill into Morzine. So just after the Bernard Eno and the Zutemelk sign, the road turns to the right here, and this is the steepest section of the Col de la Ramaz, up through the tunnel and eventually out onto the plateau. A little bit of cycling trivia. If like me, you were cycling back in the 80s, long before the tunnel was built, if you're following the career of Robert Miller and the documentary called The High Life, which I think is still out there on YouTube, this road here is the descent that featured in the opening scenes when he was overtaking the cars. So it looks like that restaurant is going to be closed. They could be raking it in. If you saw the picture of uh, Julian Alain Philippe out training the other day, Rocky in the route, that was around about here. For a more detailed look at the Col de la Ramaz, you can click the video up to the right here. So this is the last couple of hundred meters up to the top of the Ramaz. You get to this corner, past the Nairo Quintano banner, and then it suddenly flattens out. So there's actually a little plateau at the top. And off down the other side, down towards Tanange. Just a note on the descent here, the road splits at this point. The road on the left goes down into the little ski village of Pras de Lisomand. Now according to the ATAP map, we're going to miss out that village and take this road to the right, which goes, it's kind of an avoider of the village, down onto the descent, back down into Tanange. So for a more detailed look at this descent, please check back later in the week when I'll have that video uploaded. If you click the video up to the right here, it shows this transition from Tanange down to the foot of the Juplan at San Juan, which looks like here that we're getting some more new tarmac. There's a storm coming in behind me already and it's only 11 o'clock, so it's quite humid at the minute. So that's it for today. As always, any questions you've got, drop them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Good luck on the day. We'll see you next time on Cycling in the Alps.